Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. This is my client, Andrew. He's a hairdresser in Newport Beach, California. I've actually been cutting this guy's hair since he was like 13 years old, and I think he's like 30 now. It's been a long time. He doesn't have social media, otherwise I would very gladly give him a shout out here. So what we like to do with Andrew's hair is, I don't know, how, I feel really hesitant to say a punk haircut because as soon as you say something's punk, it's not. But what I'm going to give him is a haircut that dudes and bands have been doing for decades. Just something big and messy and chaotic, but tastefully shapely at the same time. So to begin with, I'm going to take a section of hair straight down the middle, and I'm actually a little bit off of center here. I didn't realize at the time because Andrew's like six foot four, and I can't see over the top of his head to his nose to get the actual center. However, thanks to the sort of unkempt nature of this hairstyle, it doesn't matter so much that it was a little bit off. So what I'm going to do to begin with is create a guide here. I'm going to build a shape for this haircut that is going to be, you know, somewhat straight, flat, parallel to the ground, but very broken. I'm doing some very deep point cutting here. Because his hair texture is really nice to work with for this kind of haircut, I can point cut it right from the get-go and just keep everything bashed and, and shattered from the beginning to where sometimes with other hair textures, if it's a little too curly or wavy, I'll have to blunt cut it and then go back and point cut it later. But, you know, as you can see with his hair, when I let go of it, it still just stands there. And because of that, I can see from a mile away if my cut is giving me the shape that I want to where if the hair bends a little bit more, curls a little bit more, a lot of times I'll flat iron or blow dry the hair straight before I go in and do this point cutting. And so uh, because of that, his hair is very easy to do this kind of haircut on. So anyways, I'm going through the uh, sides of his head now and using that center section as a guide to, to know how long to cut the rest of his hair. We're just going with a pretty general square shape here to where the hair is the shortest at the apex of the head where it's the tallest and it's a little bit longer on the outsides creating ultimately kind of a bart simpson spiky box on the top of his hair now i'm looking at two things as i do this i want that that variation in length that texture but i want to make sure the top comes to somewhat of a clean straight line and i want to make sure the notches are somewhat uniform in their depth now the further i vary these notches as far as like the deeper i go the more chaotic movement we're going to get here so if i keep it very shallow then I'm going to get a little bit of movement. But if I go very deep, I'm going to get a ton of movement. And here on the longer hair on top, I'm able to go pretty deep there before the haircut starts to look gappy and holy. So what I'm doing here after um, taking sections on the left and the right is I'm taking sections straight down the middle to make sure that both their left and right side kind of connect nicely. Now I'm going to find the widest part of his head here, and I'm going to take everything from that point upward and pull it up to roughly 45 degrees, and then I'm going to find the length on the top from that box that we just created and use it as a guide to trim this side hair up around the corner. Now doing this is going to severely soften up these corners. It's going to reduce the boxiness of the shape of the haircut and give us kind of a round corner here, sort of that, that grown out buzz cut feel. And at the same time, what it's going to do is take the widest point of his hair and emphasize and exaggerate it, or the widest point of his head, excuse me. So where his head is wide naturally, I'm leaving the hair longest right there. And so what it's going to do is emphasize and exaggerate what is naturally occurring anyways. And um, that's kind of the name of the game with this haircut. It's like a big, larger than life, like, like, yeah, it's messy hair, but it's big. And in order to keep it suitable, it is very important that it fits the head. And so for that purpose, we're leaving that extra length and that extra strength where his head is naturally wide anyways. So now that I've got those two strong points along the parietal ridge, what I'm going to do is take sections that are very slightly diagonal back, but mostly straight down. It doesn't really matter at this point if I go straight down or slightly diagonal back. I tend to go slightly diagonal back because it's a little bit easier for me to hold it and a little bit easier for me to see what I'm doing. But I'm using that length at the parietal ridge as a guide. And then I'm just graduating the hair downward with my razor. Now, I like to use like just a standard cutthroat for this. I like these Parker razors because they're like 20 bucks on Amazon. And I just, I like the way they feel like the, um, the price to quality ratio, I feel is really good with these razors. I've tried other ones that feel a little too plasticky and I've tried other ones that feel much nicer, but they're like hundreds of dollars. And I just feel like this one's a sweet spot. So I like to use it. And I used to use, you know, like a, like a feather razor or like more hair cutting razors. But the reason I ended up leaning on like just a regular barber razor is the blades are way, way cheaper for these. And if I ever wanted to, you know, line up a cheek or something with this, I could, I could use it to do that. So anyways, as I'm moving this razor to cut these, um, this graduation here, I'm taking very small strokes as I'm working through the sides because the hair is very short. And, you know, just like I was showing earlier with that red line and that blue line and the depth of your texture, like the shorter my strokes are, 
the more shallow I'm going to texturize the hair. And if I take big, broad strokes, I'm going to be putting big, deep um, kind of points into the hair. And so as I'm working up the head here toward the um, parietal ridge and the occipital bone, I am going to start taking bigger, broader strokes to get more of that deep texture. When I'm working down at the bottom of the head, I am taking very tiny little strokes because if you put deep, big notches into very short hair, it just turns into holes. You just have gaps and holes in the haircut. But on longer hair, you can get away with going a lot deeper before it looks gappy and holy. So I'm continuing taking diagonal back sections here all the way to basically the middle of the head. And what I'm going to do as I get up near the parietal ridge and near the occipital bone is rather than bringing my cutting line up and over that bone, I'm going to start bringing the hair down to my cutting line. And that's going to build weight over again where the hair is where the head is naturally wide anyways. Uh, again, just emphasizing the natural shape of the head. We want to exaggerate what is, you know, and, and Andrew has very strong bone structure and kind of a big head, but he's a he's a very loud um, looking individual. He's he's very tall. He dresses like nicely, like like he looks cool all the time. He rides a motorcycle and stuff. And so we want his hair to be larger than life and and kind of an exaggeration of what his already exaggerated looking, you know, bone structure looks like. And so we want to build up a lot of weight over the parietal ridge there. That way, when everything sticks out, again, it's just, it's like, it echoes what's already happening naturally. So as you would imagine, what I did on the right side, I'm going to continue to do on the left side, hopefully identically. Larger, broader strokes near the top, smaller, tinier strokes near the bottom. And then here, after I end up kind of working through all the hair, I start taking cross sections like in the, um, like, what do you say, perpendicular to the way that my initial sections were. That was me just cross-checking to make sure everything was kind of cut uniformly enough. So up here where the hair is left pretty long to leave that weight over the occipital bone, I want to make sure it's going to be willing to stand up. You know, there is a lot of weight here at this point. So I'm going to come in and do some razor over comb to chop short hairs in there. And, you know, you want to think about it this way. The shorter hair is, the more rigid it is. Like the longer it is, the more flexible it is, the more willing it is to bend and lay down. So I want to come in here and cut short hairs all throughout these long hairs so that the short hairs are going to want to pop up and hold up the longer hairs. And you can see right about here that the hair I'm working with is ever so slightly starting to lift up off the head because of these tiny little short hairs that I'm putting in there. And I'm just going to continue to kind of bash the hair and look at the way it's sitting until I get some, some lift in there that I want to get. Now, I clipped that hair in front out of the way, and now I'm pulling it out, and I'm going to do a little bit of punch cutting here for the same purpose. I mean, I could have done this part with a razor, but this is just another way that I could do it is to just come in and punch cut some short hairs that are going to want to pop up. So now as I shake and wiggle the hair, I can see that everything wants to stick out there. Um, you know, hair cutting is so much about, like, telling the hair what to do. Um, even to the point that as I'm blow drying this, I'm not necessarily forcing it to do anything. Um, in fact, what I'm trying to do is wiggle it a lot while I'm blow drying. So this is high heat and high power, and I'm just moving the hair a lot. Because what I find is by moving the hair a whole bunch as I'm drying it, it looks more lived in. It has more of that like I rolled out of bed look to it. To where if I want it to stand up and I just blow dry it straight up, it looks fake. It looks put. It looks like slapped on. And so I'm I'm wiggling the hair. I'm blow drying it back. I'm blow drying it forward. I'm blow drying it back. I'm blow drying it forward. And then I'm and then then I blow dry it up and I find it just has more of a lived in look if I do it this way. I'm not using a brush because I don't want to overpower the natural characteristics of the hair. I don't want to like lay down any calyx or anything. I don't want to straighten anything. I want it to look very natural. And so by avoiding a brush and not using any tension, the hair is allowed to kind of do its natural thing. Now the haircut is not finished at this point. Once I get everything kind of standing up um, and roughly loosely styled, I'll be able to go in and refine it. Uh, but it is important to note that this blow dry, you know, you're watching this right now in four times speed. I want to say it took me like eight to 10 minutes to get this thing complete. When you dry the hair, it will be poofy and fluffy and frizzy. And if it does that, it doesn't mean you blow dried it wrong. It means you didn't blow dry it long enough. You have to blow dry hair a long time for it to get this like choppy PC look. And now that I've gotten that, I can go in and start refining. So I'm using a texturizing scissor here, something I've been doing a lot more lately uh, because I like that it can very loosely kind of sketch in lines. It doesn't give me like such a blunt, crisp line. Like I want that shape there, but I don't want it blunt and crisp. I want it wavy and choppy. But what I'm doing right here is I'm going to go through and just take off any notches that might be sticking too far out. Um, I want to I want to have some semblance of uniformity in there. And so when the hair is dry like this and kind of standing straight out, it's a lot easier for me to pinpoint those, those high points and kind of bring them down to even out the shape. Sometimes with a haircut like this, I'll blow dry it straight out to begin with and I'll do the entire haircut 
with um, texturizing scissor over comb this way and then go back and do some like deep point cutting over comb. But right here, I'm just kind of free form, just refining and sculpting and shaping. I mean, it's, it's quite a bit like cutting an Afro, you know, you kind of pick the hair out and then you sculpt it out in the air. That's what I'm doing with this at this point is I'm kind of lifting the hair out and sculpting it and uh, just detailing the edges as you would do with any haircut. I like to do this after it's blow dried because I can see how it's going to lay to where if you do it with wet hair, you don't know exactly how the hair is gonna act after it's dry. So once everything is mostly detailed, I'm going to buzz off the neck hair. That's gonna allow the hair in the back to hang more freely. And once it's doing that, it'll give me a better idea of how I want to refine it. Now with a haircut like this, there's no rule. I can leave it completely sloppy or I can line it up. I can, I can go anywhere in between. And that's kind of what I chose to do here. I gave it ever so slightly a, a clean-ish silhouette, but you know, not perfectly lined up. It's still a little bit soft and more, more refining here, more refining, more refining, just lots of refining. The difference between a good haircut and a great haircut I found is, you know, five extra minutes of refining. So for the product, I'm going to use ADH Dry. And because he has a ton of hair, I'm going to use kind of a lot of product. And also this, this style in general, you know, lends well to using too much product. Like I, I get so much in the habit of telling clients, like, don't use so much product. But for this kind of style, like load it up. You want it to look dirty. You want it to look like gunked up. And what I'm doing as I apply the product is I'm reaching through the hair and applying it to the root more to more to the root and less to the ends. I say this in almost every video, but it just makes it look a little bit more natural. One of the key things with this hairstyle is you want to look like you just live in a van for two weeks, touring with your band, and you didn't have time to style your hair. You just happen to look kind of grungy. You got off stage last night and you're sweaty. Um, and so by applying more product to the root than on the ends, you're going to get more of that vibe as opposed to just looking like you have 90 spikes, which is cool too if you want to go for that look. But, you know, like if you put product from root to end uniformly, you get more of that gelled look. And if you put more product on the root and less on the ends, you get more of that messy punk spiky look. So now this is a trick that Andrew actually showed me that he likes to do with his hair. I don't I, I don't do this typically, but I've been doing it more lately. This kind of circular swirly noogie thing. Um, I don't like to do it because I can't control how the hair is going to move. But in a case like this, I kind of don't want to control everything about the hair. So here's our end result. A big, messy, chaotic pile of spikes and shards and movement that is somewhat shapely. You can see it's got some corners. It's got some emphasis on the head shape there, but at the same time is also, for lack of a better term, kind of punk. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really helps me when you do such a thing.